In these problems, we're doing a little bit of review with multiplication. And again, you'd probably just use your calculator most of the time with problems like this, and that's perfectly fine. However, it's good to know how to do it by hand in case you find yourself without a calculator. You never know. It might come in handy sometime. So let's try this. 65 times 16, that's just complicated enough for me that I don't want to try to do it in my head. So I'm going to stack them up, which is the first step for setting up multiplication. And then the process here is we take this first number and we multiply it by each of the ones on the top. And then we take the second number and do the same thing, but although there's some little special tricks along the way. So we'll start with 6 times 5. That's 30. We put the 1's column number down here, which is a 0 in 30. The 3 from the 30 heads up here and waits to be added in. 6 times 6 now. So first we went this way, now we're going this way. 6 times 6 is 36 plus 3. 36 plus 3 is 39. That all goes down here. If we had more numbers to go, I would have just put the 9 down and carried the 3, but we didn't have any more, so I put them all down here. Now we're done with the 6. We move on to the 1, and because this 1 is in the tens digit, we actually start on a second line here. We start with a 0 to represent that fact that it's in the tens digit. Now we take 1 times 5 is 5, nothing to carry there, and 1 times 6 is 6, nothing to carry there, and then we simply add those two results. 0 plus 0 is 0, 9 times, or sorry, 9 plus 5 is 14, carry the 1, Three, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 6 is 10. So the answer there is 1,040. 16 times 65 is 1,040. You can check that on your calculator. Here we're doing a little multiplying with money. And the, you know, there's a little trick to do with the decimal point, which we'll get to in a minute. And then we've also got a, a zero here, and there's a little trick to do with that, too. So let's start this. The first thing you might think of doing is taking the zero and multiplying it by all these things, but it would just be zero. So you'd fill that first thing with zeros. Instead of doing that, we're just going to get rid of that zero and put a zero there. It's sort of like we're, we're already moving on to the second step down here where we put the zero in. That's kind of like what we're doing, and then just ignoring this first column because it would be all zeros, or first row. Let's try this now. We, put it, we got rid of that zero, just dropped it down here. Now it's 6 times 3 is 18. We've got to carry the 1 up here to add in later. 6 times 4 is 24. That's 25. Got to carry the 2. And 6 times 2 is 12. We add in the 2. That's 13, 14. So I've got 1, 4, 5, 8, 0, but... I've got to put my decimal point in. And the rule with this is you count how many digits are behind the decimal point. Uh, it could be on top, could be on bottom, you count them all. In this case, there's only ones on top, and there's only two. The four and the three are behind the decimal point. So that's two, so I count over one, two spaces. That's where I put my decimal point. So our answer here is $145.80. Let's look at the last one. This is a word problem involving multiplication. It says, Gavin buys four tickets for $8.72 each. What is the total cost of the tickets if he multiplies $8.72 by four? So let's set that up. We're multiplying $8.72 times four. We can start multiplying here. Four times two is eight, nothing to carry. Four times seven is 28. The 2 goes up here, and 4 times 8 is 32, plus 2 is 34. And now I have to count how many uh, numbers we had behind the decimal point. There's 2, the 7 and the 2. So I count over 2, and that is my answer, 3488. So that is a little bit of review of multiplication.